Okay, now the machine, as it can be seen operating here, has had the voltage monitoring circuit modified so that it doesn't have any capacitors um, connected to the voltage measurement circuit so that it doesn't have an RC time constant as such or if it does it has a very very small one so that the voltage being measured by the Arduino uh, on the probe um, is varying pretty much on a spark by spark basis and, and is being measured as quickly as the Arduino can measure it uh, I thought that might be pretty unstable but the Arduino, well, it certainly gives a better spark than the horrible mess that it was doing last week However, as you can see, it does this horrible thing where it suddenly uh, sparks for a while and then suddenly whizzes back far too far and then has to advance forward again. That's because um, I've been far too conservative in the um, servo loop software. I've tried to avoid short circuits too vigorously. Now, this needs a thorough rewrite, but at the moment um, it's just not working well. So the next uh, section of video which comes up uh, is after I uh, rewrite that section a little bit um, on the fly and I make it dwell uh, for uh, I think it's something like uh, five milliseconds or something like that um, before it decides to back off at all um, when it when the voltage drops too low so this gives time for any um, uh, debris to clear possibly uh, but it certainly gets a far far better and more stable burn out of it which you'll see in the next clip here it goes this is the rate set to 16 percent all the resistance, all the capacitance. I'm told it to only go back when the voltage drops below 17 volts to advance when the voltage is above 47 volts. You can hear it hunting all the time. And up on the top there. The middle one is dwell, the bottom one is down, and the top one is up. And as you can see, this burn is much, much better. Um, still not right, of course, I've got a lot more work to do, but this is certainly a lot better than the previous uh, weeks. Well, that jumpy um, mess. Now what you've just seen there is a problem whereby the probe is actually pressing hard against the metal um, and uh, it seems as if there's a non-conductive uh, layer has built up or something like that. Uh, this has happened a few times to my burns so far. I don't know if it's because I'm just using some crappy old bolt as the electrode but uh, it, certainly, it certainly doesn't help uh, the experiments. doesn't look right. I think that's bending it. Yeah, that's bending. That's a short. There's something wrong with the system. <laughs> oh, that was interesting.
this burn where the electrode was going down the actual side of the workpiece so that you could see the sparks was very interesting because it got a pretty good burn because the way that the water was being pushed onto the electrode by the pump um, it seemed to cause the electrode to vibrate and wobble about and uh, for some reason that seemed to make the burn more smooth when the pump was turned on. It was very interesting. Um, I believe some machines actually use that as a technique where they actually vibrate the probe on purpose. Um, curious. And this is a picture of what the plastic container looks like um, after you've done some machining with all those little bits of metal which have been blown out of the workpiece. Uh, and that is what you want to filter out of the system. And that's why I can't do any proper machining for quite some while yet until I've got a proper set of filters worked out. Uh, in the meantime, I thought I'd try filtering my water to use again, which is what you can see here. Uh, what a mess. But uh, anyway, it's certainly worth uh, doing um, some sort of filtration and I've got a proper filter uh, coming up um, and it's it's in bits at the moment, but soon it'll be uh, it'll be plumbed in the system, uh, hopefully, uh, ready for the next set of experiments.